Throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be, of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world, explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. Australia is home to a vast array of wildlife, with animals living in the land down under that are unlike any other on the planet, unique in nature and exotic to the outside eyes. But perhaps even more unique and exotic, to the point of terrifying in some cases, are the mythical creatures and monsters that have appeared in stories from Australia. Some hail from ancient aboriginal mythology, while others sprang forth from urban legends of modern Australia, and some find themselves existing in both ancient and modern stories. This program will detail some of the most unique, most dangerous, and outright strangest monsters of Australian legend. Our first creature is one of the most well-known and most feared creatures of Aboriginal legend, the Boonyip. Called a plethora of different regional names, such as the Wowie Wowie, the Yalu, the Kian Prati, the Dongyu, and more, the Boonyip is a large water monster said to haunt fresh water sources such as swamps, rivers, waterholes, and billabongs. Descriptions of the monster's appearance vary greatly, with some saying that it has mammalian features similar to a seal or a wet dog, others giving it reptilian features like a crocodile or an aquatic dinosaur. Feathers, fins, tusks, claws, beards, a duckbill, a horse tail, a single massive eye, and a stomach mouth have all been attributed to this bizarre creature. Whatever it looks like, boonyips are universally stated to be of a ravenous appetite, attacking animal and human alike, though having a preference for women and children. Its hunting methods are believed to be similar to that of a crocodile or a leopard seal, swimming silently up to its prey before ambushing them, dragging them screaming into the water and tearing them to shreds with its terrible teeth. Its loud, blood-curdling cries echo all throughout the outback, sending fear into the hearts of all who hear them. Truly a terrible creature, though some legends claim that it was sent by the spirits of the Dreamtime to punish evildoers. A number of possible origins for the Boonyip legend have arisen, some believe the legend was a case of mistaken identity, perhaps elephant seals or leopard seals, both large aquatic carnivores with formidable teeth and make a lot of noise. Or a saltwater crocodile, an aggressive aquatic carnivore recorded to have killed people, could have begun the legends. Others surmise that the Bunyip stems from ancient encounters with now extinct megafauna, such as the Diprotodon, but there are also many who believe Boonyips are real creatures hiding in the outback as a cryptid, with sightings of it reported every year in southeastern Australia. All around the world, legends of gigantic ape men circulate. North America has Bigfoot or Sasquatch, the Himalayas have the Yeti, and Australia has the Yowie. Like its worldly relatives, the Yowie is described as being tremendous in stature, anywhere from 7 to 12 feet in height, with huge hands and feet, flat-nosed with wide nostrils, thick eyebrows and sunken eyes, and a rancid stench. Their mouths were of prodigious width with thick lips and prominent jaws. Other traits spoken of include large canine teeth, inconsistent numbers of toes on either foot, or even backwards feet to make it difficult to track the creature's movements. Like real-life great apes, 
The Yaoi is said to be gentle by nature, but can be stirred to aggression if it is disturbed. It is primarily an herbivore, but will gladly take small to medium-sized animals. Corpses of mangled animals such as livestock, kangaroos, and even dogs have been attributed to a hungry yaoi. Aboriginal legends of this creature may stem from ancient encounters with extinct hominids such as the Gigantopithecus. But sightings of the yaoi have circulated Australia for hundreds of years first by the Aborigines, then by European settlers, and even still to this day. Another cryptid beast said to wander Australia, particularly Queensland, is the Queensland Tiger. Also called the Yari, the Queensland Tiger is reportedly a feline the size of a large dog, with a striped coat, a long tail, prominent teeth, and violent disposition towards animals and people. Like Boonyips and Yowies, the Queensland Tiger is often considered to be a misidentification of, or at least inspired by, an extinct animal of the Pleistocene era. Thylacolio carnifex, or the marsupial lion, is an animal of similar size and predatory habits that once lived in Australia as late as the Pleistocene period perhaps coexisting with ancestors of modern Australian Aborigines. Though the Thylacolio went extinct roughly 30,000 years ago, some theorize the cryptid is in fact a descendant or very rare subspecies. Aboriginal Australians told stories of the Yari for centuries, and beginning in 1871, the Queensland Tiger began to be witnessed all throughout the rainforests and wetlands. Countless sightings have been reported over the last two centuries, with more than a few specimens reportedly killed, though the remains were conveniently never salvaged. Another big cat reported to haunt the wilds of Australia is the Blue Mountains Panther. Also called the Lithgow Panther, the Blue Mountains Panther is a cryptid claimed to exist by the residents of the Blue Mountains. The panther is said to resemble a melanistic leopard or jaguar, with a lean yet powerful frame, dark fur, and razor-sharp claws designed for climbing trees and bringing down large prey. As to the panther's origin, many presume that the species is in fact a group of panthers descended from panthers who were released into the outback during the 1940s, or maybe escaped from traveling circuses. Perhaps less fantastical than some of the other beasts and monsters to appear on this list, nevertheless, belief in the Blue Mountains Panther is incredibly strong. Evidence to the cryptid's existence include paw prints and claw marks that do not match any predatory animal native to Australia. Kangaroos and sheep that have been killed and dragged into tree branches, similar to how a leopard stores its kills and plenty of alleged eyewitnesses to a big black cat circulate in the Blue Mountains area. Australia is home to a vast array of reptiles, particularly lizards. But Uwala Ray mythology tells of a gigantic, venomous monitor lizard called Mungungali. Mungungali was a giant goanna who terrorized the local aborigines with his venomous bite and voracious appetite. Afraid the tribes would soon be wiped out by the constant attacks, a black snake called Uyuburui offered to steal the hidden venom sack from Mungungali. He waited until the guana was resting after a large meal before offering to reveal the tribe's secret plot to destroy him, in exchange for being allowed to hold the venom bag for his own safety. Mungungali, reluctant but determined to learn of a potential plot against him, took the venom bag from his mouth and handed it to Uyubalui, who then placed it in his own mouth. Uyubalui then fled, easily outpacing the still sluggish reptile. Upon returning to the tribes, Uyubalui refused to destroy the bag and instead retreated into the brush. 
such as how snakes became venomous, and lizards, like the ferocious Mungungali, had lost their bite. The Loch Ness Monster of Scotland supposedly has a cousin living in Australia, the Hawkesbury River Monster. Since the early 1800s, people have claimed to see a monster swimming beneath the surface of the Hawkesbury River in New South Wales, Australia. The river in which the creature is said to lurk stretches 75 miles with a maximum depth of 45 feet, plenty of room for a monster. Like many water monsters, this aquatic anomaly is described as looking like the classic image of an extinct plesiosaur. The Hawkesbury River monster is said to be between 25 and 35 feet long, with a large body that is covered in patchy black and gray skin, a long neck that is stopped off by a football-shaped head, four large flippers, and a thick tail that tapers away from the body. Depictions of a dinosaur-like creature with a long neck, long tail, and four flippers have been found within Aboriginal rock art found throughout the region, dating back to around 3,000 years ago. When white settlers started to show up in Australia in the 1800s, the indigenous Australians would warn them not to go near the water's edge for fear that the creature would quickly pluck them from the shore and pull them back down into the water, never to be seen again. Witnesses claim to have seen the creature capsize boats, as well as large slide marks found along the bank that head toward the water, as if a large creature was recently sunning itself mere hours before. Science says the creature is pure myth, but superstition says otherwise. One of the most prolific marsupials of Australia is the koala. While normally a very docile and slow-moving herbivore, modern Australian folklore tells of a relative of the koala that is a large and temperamental carnivore. Enter the drop bear, said to be one of Australia's most foul-tempered and carnivorous creatures. Drop bears are said to hunt by ambushing ground-dwelling animals from above, waiting as much as four hours to make a surprise kill. Once prey is within sight, the drop bear will fall as much as 30 feet to pounce on top of the unsuspecting victim. The initial impact often stuns the prey, allowing it to be quickly subdued. While many creatures of folklore were imagined to explain an unknown occurrence, or as a cautionary tale, or even inspired by living and extinct animals, the drop bear was created solely as a means of entertainment. As the story goes, the drop bear legend was created by locals to confuse and frighten tourists, a jest that has only been emphasized by fun exhibits in the Australian Museum and tongue-in-cheek articles from Australian Geographic. Yet another beast said to lurk within the waters of the Australian outback is the Muljewink. The Muljewink is a creature or race of creatures that inhabits the waters of Australia, namely the Murray River. It is described as a gigantic half-man, half-fish creature whose enormous hands are said to be strong and large enough to disrupt ships. Stories of the Muljewink are commonly told to children, used for generations to warn children off of lingering too close to the water or peeking over the sides of a boat. One of the most famous stories features a steamboat carrying largely European passengers, as well as a few Aboriginal elders on board. While on the Murray River, the creature's scaly, clawed hands rose from the water and began to take hold of the ship. The captain, terrified, took hold of his gun and began to shoot. The Aboriginal elders begged him to stop, but the captain continued to fire. Eventually, the Muljewink released the boat and hurried off towards the depths. But the Muljewink 
was not yet finished with the trigger-happy captain. It was said that several days later, the captain fell inexplicably ill, with terrible blisters blooming throughout his skin, leaving his body writhing from every pore. Six months later, he died in complete agony, without a cure or explanation of the mysterious disease. The Moljewink got his revenge, and it would appear that brute strength and a terrifying appearance are not the only thing a Moljewink possesses. Our final creature is the Yaramayahu, a vampiric monster found within the Pacific forests of the continent. They are strange little monsters, like a blend of a frog and a man, covered in bright red fur and standing about four feet high. Its largest features are its head, mouth, and stomach. They have no teeth within their mouth and simply swallow their food whole, even prey as large as a grown man. The points of their fingers and the tips of their toes are cup-shaped, like the suckers of an octopus. Yaramiyahu live mostly in thick leafy trees, preferably wild fig trees where, rather than hunt for their food, they simply pounce upon a person, place their hands and feet upon the victim, and drain their blood. The Yaramiyahu does not aim to drain all the blood from a body, and leaves a sufficient amount to keep the victim weakened, but alive. After a time, it swallows its prey into its mouth, head first. It will then rise and perform a dance until the prey is well inside its stomach. It then will drink copious amounts of water before falling asleep. When the creature awakens, it will vomit the remains of its most recent meal and poke them and tickle them with a stick to ensure the person is not feigning death. Truly a bizarre ritual, but should the Yaramayahu fail to check the victim, the spirit of the wild fig tree would kill him by entering his ear and causing a mumbling noise until the Yaramayahu is transformed into a clump of mushrooms. A person who is caught and swallowed by a Yaramayahu and survives has the potential to run away and live to tell the tale, made easier by the creature's awkward gait. However, it is important not to let a Yaramayahu swallow you multiple times. The second time a person is swallowed and regurgitated, they become shorter and entirely bald. By the third time, they shrink once more, and thick hair grows over their body. After enough cycles of swallowing and vomiting, the person shall become a Yarumuyahu himself. Some of the strangest and most dangerous creatures on the planet call Australia their home. But the creatures found within the myths and the legends of the continent are certainly stranger and even more dangerous. They appear deep in the forests, high in the mountains, and practically every body of water. From ancient Aboriginal mythology, to children's cautionary tales, to urban legends of modern-day cryptids, the monsters of Australian folklore are sure to turn more than a few heads of the curious lot. <laughs>